Boom, boom, test, 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 one, two, test, 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 boom. What's going on, guys? Samuel World from Samuel One World Productions here. Back with another top 10 list for you all today. Yes, for today's video, I'm not here to talk about my top 10 best movies of 2011. I've all them. Yeah, honestly, this one is definitely one of the harder ones to do, honestly, because there were so many great movies that came out during that year, and I did do a little bit of shopping for a while, honestly, so I think I never got to think of what was going to be on this list, or at least the order of the film, so there with me, but I still hope you all enjoyed the list nonetheless. I'm definitely excited to hear this one, but hope you enjoy it. As always, let me know your down the list down below. Let me know what your favorite movies are tell us down below in the comment section. And I hope you enjoy it. But, before we get to your list, let's get the honorable, honorable mentions. The films I still really loved, just damn it, listen. Those honorable mentions are Hugo, Warhorse, Girl with a Dragon Tattoo. Drive, Money After Christmas, Moneyball, Winnie the Pooh, Fright Night Remake, Crazy Stupid Love, and Captain America the First Avenger. Again, this wasn't easily some movie movies because a lot of the animation films are fantastic movies. So it definitely paid me to obviously have to leave these films off the list. So I get bad me, but as always, anyways, let's get to the list, shall we? Now, I did like the bit a little bit of what was going to be number 10. There was a few choices, like, and a lot of our mentions, like, to be any of your mentions, honestly, could have made number 10, honestly. It was definitely a long, long debate. But in the end, I decided to go with the Muppets. Yeah, I feel that bit sure surprised a lot of people how actually emotionally depth it was, honestly. And I think whether you are a Muppets fan or whether you're familiar with the characters or not, there's pretty much a stuff to very in terms of the drama stuff, in terms of what goes on with the story. How the characters are really handled, and like we got Jason Segel and Adams pretty much being comedic masterpiece, comedic masterclass here with loving not only like very likable characters and very interesting characters, but having their own interesting art throughout the movie that really ties to what's going on. I find that the sets and the costume design are just fantastic across the board. You also get great performances from the actual kids. Muppets themselves who have a lot of great development and growth and a lot of itching stuff throughout the entire movie And of course to some men of Muppets Just kiss like it's funny heartwarming hilarious what more could you ask for? Now in number 9 I definitely knew this film was probably going to be on the list in some way I just wasn't sure where it was going to land up But in number 9 we have Fast Five which Tuesday I still think is the best Fast and Furious movie, which I'm pretty sure a lot of people do think it's the best Fast and Furious movie in. I mean, obviously for good reason, because yeah, this is a film that pretty much changed the formula of the Fast and Furious franchise. It has a franchise that's known for street and car street racing. I almost said car racing. That's known for street racing. And it's now pretty much a heist franchise, like, like heist and crime and all that stuff, which... I think it's actually, at the time at least, was actually a good choice for the franchise to go to. To make it feel like a lot more different, it's not a lot more stand out. And while it still has a lot of the crazy over the topness that you would expect from this franchise, it doesn't go at the insane levels that they do later on, especially in Fast 9 and other movies in this franchise, but it does retain a lot of the charm and has a lot of likable characters that we expect. You know, it pretty much ends like after the last movie, honestly, and you can and you have the foreign girl really good art throughout the movie, and it's by the characters and the actors at their best here. You also got Luke Hobbs, played by The Black Johnson, who is an amazing, great foil to the to Vin Diesel here. And he has some fantastic moments here, some great fight sequences, fantastic action. The crazy dumb fun that you expect from Fast and Furious franchise is at its all-time best here. And it also easily has the best character moments of the entire franchise. As well, and while this franchise is really known for having those dumb moments, this is one that at least feels the most grounded. Can't really say much for the average of the franchise, but I mean, I still do enjoy them, honestly. But yeah, Fast Five is by by the lens, so it's always going to be the best in the franchise, no matter how many times they try to top it. And they definitely have tried to top it. The grounded nature and the realistic stuff, and also the 
good character moments to make Fast Five a really standout movie and is definitely the best in this franchise. Now we get to my number eight, we get to I think one of the best comedies of the 2010s, and that is Bridesmaids. If I put Bridesmaids on this list, and I'm sure you have, like, I love Bridesmaids. I love it when I first saw it, and it's definitely from all the most watchable comedies out there. Like, it pretty much has a story template where you're expecting, and it's not one of those comedies that, well, it does come from where you expect to have a film to go. It's elevated greatly by the cast, it's elevated greatly by the writing and the humor. Honestly, like the cats itself is just fantastic here. Honestly, this was you know, Crystal Wick definitely at her best here. Honestly, playing characters that you don't really like, you're saying how how she likes a lot of the movie, but you do at least understand like, how great she is. It was got Melissa McCarthy playing pretty much like stealing every scene that he's in. Like, you got a great coming in cast here, and they all deliver many great lines, many great moments. Like, do you mind you the diarrhea scene? That's that's how you. Like that is honestly how you do that type of humor, right? But again, like in most comedies, you have a great heart to it. You have a really nice message, and characters do change throughout the movie, and you really do feel about the about the end of the movie. A movie that smiley makes you smile, makes you laugh. It's pretty much just what a comedy should do, and it's also consistently funny throughout. So yeah, it hits all the right notes. Now we get to another return to former franchise at number seven, and that is X Men First Class. Yes, X-Men, X-Men, X-Men! First class. Yeah, I love, I love X-Men First Class. It's definitely might be one of the best films in the X-Men franchise. And it's definitely probably difficult how to do a prequel right. Of course, this was an, as the X-Men franchise was definitely a weird set at the time, considering, you know, there's a the last stand, and then there was, or there's Wolverine, just... Yeesh! But they decided to do a different idea and like going for a prequel. I think that's back back to basic and well now you kind of knew is definitely questionable not. They still do a great job of telling a very compelling narrative. We do some emergency characters and if I you know about what's happened at this movie and everything. It's so much of a clean movie now again. A lot of that's because of the writing, a lot of that's because of the actors they get to play him again. Jeff Lawrence and Tiffany is taken, despite which do a character lay on, she is much better here. And a lot of your actors definitely do well with the job, they do well with playing great characters, you get great action set pieces here. And basically, the, one of the hardest movies movie is based the relationship between, of course, Magneto and Charles, played excellently by James McAvoy and Mike Fossman. And despite what they do with Magneto, still keep doing Magneto to lay on these movies. At least they did a great job with, with developing their relationship and who these characters are. And they're back and forth with each other. And they all have natural chemistry that leads to an amazing final battle where one of the most emotional scenes in the X-Men franchise. So, yeah, great action, great spectacle, free visuals, fantastic acting, and overall a very emotional ending. And one of the best final battles in any X-Men movie. Now coming in number six, we have Kung Fu Panda Two. Two. And again, I love the first Kung Fu. The hell it was in my top five of my favorite movies in 2008, honestly. So, sequel manages to kind of outdo a lot of I still debate one. I think this is better than the first one, honestly. But it's definitely at least on par. Honestly, it's, it's at least on par with the first one, having more, much more greater scale, more crazy action set pieces, and and stunning and compelling narrative involving Poe and his father and who his real father really is and what goes on with that and Poe's just about background in general it makes one really emotional core story while having a really scary and threatening antagonist of the movie still having the great animation, the great music, the great back and forth, the great humor again not going over with the bad jokes that you think a film like this would do but he managed to deliver Deliver. I smile and laugh. It's a great sequel, great movie. It does well on the emotional core that it does. I do think we do pay off well compared to 3, which was my least favorite of the three movies. It's still a pretty good movie. But while well, compared to 2, it's still an excellent sequel and definitely one of the best, best films that DreamWorks has done, like with the first movie. Top 5 people, and coming in at number 5, we have Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, which yeah, for the longest time I always say whatnot is my favorite Mission Impossible movie because of course there's this, Fallout, 
Blur Nation and, of course, the most recent Dead Reckoning that came out later this year. Yeah, I always do go back and forth on which those four films I actually enjoy. Well, at least the ones I consider the best. And, 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 and there's even a lot of I think the first protocol being the best, honestly. And, I mean, honestly, for good reason, because Ghost Protocol is a fantastic movie that one wish possible to definitely stay the franchise. Ghost Protocol basically lifted up to new heights. Literally lifted up to new heights for saying that. Virtually, this scene that's one of the best action set pieces of all time. I know you still got a pretty compelling narrative, you still got Tom Cruise being Tom Cruise, you got a great cast of characters. The film could have better, but he didn't look, bring the movie down, honestly. Okay, the actions are great, the story is great, the way to it tests the team in a new ways and what it does. It's just fantastic. The score is great. Again, the cinematography. Again, Brad Bird did a fantastic job here. Again, it's definitely in the be up like an Irish Pops movie that's done the best action movies of all time. And like, I definitely debate between this Fallout and, of course, the Reset Reckoning as my favorite of the franchise. But all in all, this protocol is Fine Testo Mukalanta. Now we get to my number four. Now this is Warrior. <laughs> Sorry, my number four is Warrior, which the film I always see as one of those movies that, if you, it's always like one of those movies that basically, if you were thinking of an underage gem that you believe to watch, this is always that one movie. Like it's basically again a sports movie about two brothers played by Tom Hardy and Joe Edgerton, and. To be honest, I'm not really get too much about this movie because, like I said, it's one of those like underrated film stats. But it's one of the movies that go for very high emotions, has incredible cinematography, some of the best boxes, some of the best sequences in a sports movie you will ever see, and Tom Hardy and Joel Edgerton pretty much delivering top tier performance, some of the best performances. Now we get to top three again, similar to my top two of my 2010 video. All these movies are films that are still all time favorites of mine. It was definitely a debate, honestly, which one. So, at number three, we get to one of the most surprising movies I have ever seen in my career life, which led to one of the best trilogies of all damn time. And that is Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Yeah, who knew that a rebooted trilogy of the Planet of the Apes? Would be Zilla's Dice 4 would be High Blood's one of the best trilogies of all time. Like, I'm pretty sure nobody thought that. I'm pretty sure when the first movie came out, nobody was excited for it, and nobody was pumped for this movie, and probably for good reason because, considering the last AP we got for this was a Tim Burton one, the Tim Burton one, which goes so well. Which, yeah. So I'm pretty sure no one was looking forward to like a kind of a reboot or kind of a prequel, as you say, of the Planet Ace franchise, but somehow, from the first movie alone, they managed to make it work. But, but the, they managed to do a job. It had to have compelling human characters, having the apes be like, have a reason to why they end up like going crazy and insane, and never really like true like, showing what side is good or bad. That's the thing I've always loved about this trilogy is that each of the movies always they'll never show like, the humans or apes are being like right or wrong. They never choose like, oh, the humans are terrible, the apes are supreme. No. They just show both sides as good and as pretty much equal, which is pretty impressive. Quite a yells get great performances from the cast and run, especially James Franco. And of course you got Caesar who is sorry, or Caesar who's one of the best characters in recent film history. You know, so I'm going that far. With his character art that's started throughout this movie, the visual effects, and played excellent by Andy Circus, the many incredible sequences that we get, and also the outstanding visual effects that sound like you're even better in the other movies, the very emotional human story, and of course, we got two amazing sequences with the Golden Gate Bridge sequence and see just yeah, screaming, No! Which still gives me chills to this very day. And then you get emotional scene after emotional scene, ten sequence after ten sequence, like it's really directed as well. And it's just and two other sequences get even better with this. Again, I never always debate which now which of the three movies are my favorite, honestly, so but I think all of them are still fantastic and Rise definitely starts to be on this list. I think it's actually a bit underrated in this trilogy, honestly, but 
Not many people just talk more about Dawn or War, honestly. But Red 28 is still a fantastic movie that I'm pretty sure nobody expected to be as good as it was. Now, coming in at number two, num two is 50-50. This is definitely not one of those like, very underappreciated movies that's kind of a lot of lovely recently, and rightly so, honestly. I found based with Jolson Gordon Levitt basically finds out he has cancer and his basic has to deal with it. You also have Seth Rogen and it's a comedy, which. And this one honestly shouldn't be as well as it does, because again, Kansas is obviously a very sensitive subject, like extremely sensitive, so you have to make sure you do it the right way. And remember the point that this film definitely, and I mean definitely, does it the right way. Managed to develop the great comedic aspects, but while telling a great kind of serious story about a guy going through cancer. And those tones have never really clashed. They managed to balance them out pretty well, actually. Like, it would have been easy for them to do that and have and pretty much them being extensive like, about this stuff, stuff, but they tell it very seriously while also still being a consistently funny comedy. By having Seth Rogen be what you expect Seth Rogen to be, and Joseph Gullivar doing, in my opinion, still his best performance that he has ever given in any movie. Again, the main scenes where you can tell he's just so frustrated and just so about all, all the stuff and of course that Christ scene he has with Seth Rogen's character and also Anna Kendrick who also is fantastic here gets me every single time but yeah back more people on the characters as well it's great again Bryce Allen Howe also has to play an interesting role throughout the movie it's a pretty emotional movie that really talks about hard strings but isn't afraid to be funny and it balances just tone extremely well so yeah 50-50 it's a film that I, if you're not checked out I definitely recommend it but now we get to what I think is the best movie of 2011. And, you know, I always debate between this and 50 50 as my favorite movie of the year, honestly. I always, I always go back and forth between both these movies, honestly. So it's just by a sheetsy, weensy, teensy, keetsy, peetsy sliver. And that is Harry Potter and Deathly House Part 2. Yeah, I always, yeah, this has always been my favorite Harry Potter movie, and it's definitely one next to be the perfect conclusion to this franchise. And it's still, like, I always say to be the best Harry Potter movie on, it has the most emotion, has the most payoff to a lot of these characters, has the most back and forth between a lot of everything going on, has the most emotional, tense moments in this entire franchise, especially. Everything involved with Steve in this movie and what he goes through and what is revealed about him throughout the entire franchise, which makes his roles in the previous movie a lot more impactful. On the same course, the final duel, which ends up being very satisfying. Again, pretty much being spent a lot of this movie's law having an entirely, truly perfect ending. Like, honestly, I couldn't think the ending any more perfect. It's pretty much the true epic conclusion that we've been wanting in this franchise. And it's it's a very emotional movie, a very great back and forth, fantastic visuals, and best looking film in the franchise, so yeah, it's my favorite movie of 2011. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed me talking about my favorite movie of 2011. I hope you enjoyed this list, let me know down below in the comment section what are your favorite movies of this year, would love to know down below. Excited to talk about more about these films, so stay tuned for that. Die, 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 die. Left inside the team going through this decade. Hoping I can get these videos finished before the end of the year, so stay tuned for that. So always thank you so much for watching, I truly honestly appreciate it. I am Sarah World World from Sarah World Productions. I will see you next time as always. Stay cool, love, Betty. Peace.